dear friends um, in today's lecture we'll uh, basically be completing the two component two phase um, mixture discussion that we started in the previous class to show how we can actually evaluate um, the compositions of the liquid phase and vapor phase so what we understand is that suppose i have two substances let's say a and b and they are mixed together and they are also evaporating so in an enclosure or in a kind of closed vessel you have a liquid mixture and on top of the surface you have a vapor mixture what we understand is that because the liquid and vapor of one substance are in equilibrium with each other and the liquid and vapor of the other substance are in equilibrium with each other depending on the composition uh, or depending on the amount of the two substances that are there the composition of the liquid need not be exactly the same as the composition of the vapor the vapor can have a different composition let's say x1v and x2v as the mole fractions x1v plus x2v adding up to 1 and similarly the liquid can have a different composition x1l and x2l they are adding to different they are adding to uh, unity and uh, because the only regulation that is there is that the chemical potential of substance 1 in the liquid and vapor phase should be equal to each other and chemical potential of substance 2 in liquid and vapor phase should be equal to each other and the composition determines what would be the chemical potential of each of those substances in the liquid mixture and in the vapor mixture so the chemical the uh, phase equilibrium is the, uh, therefore determined by the temperature pressure of course and the composition and when the temperature and pressure and the co composition by composition we mean how much of a is added to how much of b depending on that the mole fractions in the liquid and vapor phases will also be affected and will also be determined so let's uh, look at what we were uh, doing in the previous class we were taking the simplest case of um, the liquid behaving like an ideal mixture or ideal solution and the vapor behaving like an ideal gas mixture okay so in such a case the raoult's law applies to the system so we were looking at it uh, in the last class let's go back to the whiteboard so we understand that um, uh, when the liquid behaves like an ideal uh, solution and the vapor behaves like an ideal gas mixture the raoult's law which is given by this expression that is here uh, it applies to substance 1, uh, the, uh, the constituent 1 as well as the constituent 2 or the species 1 as well as species 2. Okay. So, the X1L is the uh, mole fraction of uh, substance 1 in the liquid phase and X2L is the mole fraction of the substance 1, uh, substance 2 in the liquid phase. So, these two add up to 1 because the mole fractions should add up to 1. There are only two components. And similarly x1v and x2v add up to 1. Now we all know that this x1v into p is nothing but when it is an ideal gas mixture the partial pressure of substance 1. So it is like you can write it as p1v and x2v into p will be equal to p2v which is the partial pressure of substance 2 and the total pressure because there are only two uh, constituents the total pressure will be actually equal to x1v sorry the p1v plus p2v and therefore equal to x1 l p1 sat plus x2 l p2 sat that's what we have written here in the denominator so the pressure is equal to the sum of the two partial pressures and since these two partial pressures are p1v and p2v they are adding up and the sum of these two is nothing but the sum of these two because these are equal so this is your uh, expression that we had got in the uh, previous class now what is the implication of this let us uh, look at that how do we use this to calculate the composition so for the vapor phase okay since um, you have um, um, the pressure is equal to p1v plus p2v and uh, this is nothing but uh, uh, x1v into p and this is uh, plus x2v into p where x1 so x1v plus x2v add up to 1 right so this is 
fields and because by Rolle's law this is equal to x1 l into p1 sat and this by Rolle's law is equal to x2 l into p2 sat okay and we also know that x2 l and x1 l add up to 1 so this is 1 minus x1 l okay so this is basically the expression that you would get so what you will get is that the pressure p is equal to in terms of this uh, x1 l into uh, p1 sat minus p2 sat plus p2 sat correct because x1 l to p1 sat here x1 l minus x1 l to p2 sat here so this becomes this so if i plot it on a graph where uh, i have pressure on the y axis and uh, x1 on the x axis okay uh, or x x1 we will call it l okay so you have actually x1 l on the x axis then it actually becomes a straight line uh, function because uh, when um, x1 l is 0 this goes to 0 it is actually equal to p2 sat which is actually pure p2 uh, pure substance 2 and here when x1 l is 1 so in the liquid phase you have only the uh, pure uh, this one then the p2 sat gets cancelled between these two it becomes equal to p1 sat so let us say p1 sat is higher than p2 sat in, a, in, a, in the given example that we take so let us say this is p1 sat so this is uh, x1 l equal to 1 so this is uh, 0 and this is 1 so in the liquid phase if there is only phase 2 a uh, substance 2 then you have this which is the saturation pressure of p2 and if uh, in the liquid phase you have only one substance 1 then it is p1 sat and anywhere in between you can see it's a linear function of x1 l so i can actually connect these two by a straight line uh, okay this is easier to shift the goalpost so let's do that so this is p1 sat okay so this is basically what you uh, get when this is when temperature is constant okay because uh, we uh, wrote these expressions at any given temperature so this is p1 sat and p2 sat at uh, given temperature so at that, uh, that temperature you get this so this is a straight line so this is the relationship for the vapor phase now what happens to the liquid phase in the liquid phase um, we uh, can write from um, the Rolle's law that we wrote that um, x1 v into p is equal to x1 l into p1 sat so if you, if you write the ratio um, x1 v by x1 l okay x1 v divided by x1 l then it becomes equal to p1 sat divided by p and this p also we know that um, it is you know, obtained by uh, the sum of those so it is actually p1 sat divided by x1 p1 sat l plus x2 l p2 sat okay so if i um, divide both numerator and denominator by uh, uh, p2 sat then i'll get is equal to p1 sat by p2 sat in the numerator and in the denominator i'll have this will be x1 l plus this i can write it as 1 minus x1 l x2 l into uh, 
Okay, so this is P1 sat by P2 sat. And this is V1. So this is the expression that you get. So if I call P1 sat by P2 sat as beta, now this is only a function of temperature because P1 sat is a function of temperature, P2 sat is a function of temperature. So this you can write it as beta divided by um, X1L into beta minus 1 plus 1. Okay. So this is the expression that I can write. So um, if I uh, want to take all x1l to one side, I will be able to say x1v is equal to x1l into beta divided by 1 plus x1l into 1 minus beta. Okay, So, this is the expression that I get. Now, inverting this, I uh, will be able to write also, I will just skip the algebra, I will be able to write also that x1l is equal to um, x1v divided by beta minus x1 b into 1 minus beta. You can derive this for yourself, oh, sorry this is beta minus 1. Okay, so let me check if it is a plus or a minus. Okay, so this is correct, this one is a plus and this one is a minus, so this is correct, okay. So you can write this and uh, now combining these two, I will be able to write an expression for P in terms of uh, X1 uh, V, so you will get uh, P is equal to P1 sat divided by beta into 1 minus x1 v plus x1 v. Okay, so you find that uh, this p is no more linear in uh, x1 v in this case. So, uh, what will end up happening in this uh, figure is that uh, uh, if I uh, try to write so it for x1 v, the pressure will be a nonlinear function like this. Okay, so what happens is if I start from uh, so the, the, the when the pressure is higher, it's the liquid phase, and the pressure is lower, it's the vapor phase. So when I start from some state A here and reduce the pressure until such time that we get into the liquid vapor region, then the liquid will have this composition, but the first vapor bubble that gets formed will have this composition. So if I call this as point B and point C. Then the uh, flash evaporation that happens because of lowering of pressure, the first vapor that we get will be having a larger um, uh, 
uh, fraction of uh, substance 1 than substance 2. That is also understandable because P1 sat is higher which means that the vapor pressure of 1 is higher. So, 1 is more volatile and therefore, when the vapor forms, the vapor will contain a higher quantity of. Uh, so, this is the composition of the vapor that you will get and the composition of the liquid will be in this one. Okay. So, the liquid composition will be here and the vapor composition will be here. This is basically what you will uh, end up seeing and because the vapor has a larger quantity of uh, substance 1, the liquid will progressively go lower in uh, uh, substance 1 and towards substance 2 and the vapor will go progressively towards uh, this way. So, then we will uh, do that. The, the evaporation will actually move along this line. Similarly, if I start from this position and compress, increase the pressure, then so, so let us call this point as D. The first, um, so when it reaches, uh, the vapor reaches the first condensation point, the first drop of liquid that condenses will have this composition and the vapor would have this composition. Okay, so, this is basically what you will need to understand. So, there is a fractionation or separation that starts happening the moment there is a phase change. Okay. So, if I uh, translate this into the temperature axis, so this is for one particular temperature. So, if I do this for multiple temperatures, so if I start a temperature axis which is perpendicular to this and I do this uh, for multiple temperatures and then I can plot the temperature on one axis and x on the other axis. So, this will be the diagram that I will be plotting. So, if I do that, uh, then I will end up uh, getting a figure which is something like this. So, this is the temperature axis and this is the x1 axis, x1 L or x1 V. So, you will have a slightly nonlinear uh, region. So, this is lower temperatures is uh, liquid, higher temperatures is vapor and you, okay, if I uh, start from a liquid at uh, let us say this co composition, liquid at uh, this composition and let us say this is point A and I heat it to its boiling point. So, the first vapor that gets formed will have this composition okay? and this is basically substance 2 and this is substance 1 because x1 is 0 here and x1 is 1 here. So, uh, uh, Okay, it should have been drawn the other way around. Um, let me. Because it said that 1 is more volatile than 2, so its boiling point will be lower than 2. So, we will be here, this will be uh, T1 sat at any given pressure, and this will be T2 sat, and you will have the lines going like that. Okay, so, we will have then this vapor will have a larger concentration of uh, substance 1 and liquid will have a smaller concentration of substance 1. Similarly, when I come from the, so this is the liquid side and this is the vapor side. So, if I come from the vapor side and decrease the temperature, the condensation when happens, the liquid will have uh, larger concentration of 2 and a, a vapor would have higher concentration of 2. So, this is the way it uh, will translate to when I go to that. So, you can actually have a T x diagram and a P x diagram which then you can visualize as um, there will be a three dimensional diagram. So, this is the uh, temperature axis, this is the pressure axis and this is the x 1 axis. So, you can get um, plots of these and if on the PT diagram, you get the saturation curve, okay? saturation curve of 1 and saturation curve of 2. So, uh, when it is pure 1, it is so pure saturation curve of 1, in pure 2, it is such a pure saturation curve of 2, in between, these will be changing and uh, the pressure uh, at any given point at saturation will be lower than the pressure at the saturation pressure of the uh, higher vapor pressure uh, substance. So, this is the way you will understand this. Okay. So, using this then, uh, we can calculate the composition of one from the other. So, if I know the x1v 
and x2 b then I will be able to calculate x1 l and x2 l if I know the x1 l and x2 l I can I'll be able to calculate the x1 b and x2 v uh, given that beta is a function only of temperature. So, that is the way uh, we go about calculating the compositions. Okay. Now, the next application that I wanted to uh, discuss is um, uh, elevation of boiling point by adding a solute to a solvent. So, suppose I have water and I would like to uh, increase its uh, boiling point, then I add some substance to it which is less volatile than water. So, what happens is that uh, once I add the solute, then it's, uh, it, it reduces the mole fraction of water in the liquid solution. Okay. So, in the liquid solution since the mole fraction of water is reduced, x1 L is lower. So, from uh, Raoult's law, so what is Raoult's law? Raoult's law is uh, x1 L into P1 sat is equal to x x2 uh, sorry x1 b into p okay so if i uh, decrease x1 below 1 when it's a pure substance this is 1 so uh, it will be just p sat is equal to x1 v into p but when i add something to the uh, solution then this x1 l goes below 1 and therefore this quantity decreases and therefore this quantity also decreases. So, if I show it on the pt diagram, so this is p and uh, this is t, okay. So, suppose this is my pt diagram, okay, right. So, this is solid, this is liquid and this is vapor. Since at any given uh, initial pressure suppose this is the boiling point for the pure substance we call this as let us say T B 0 where 0 indicates that there is no solute added to it at that condition. Okay. Now, since uh, uh, adding the solute lowers the vapor pressure the uh, line that will be drawn here. So, this is for the pure solvent and this will be for the solution. Okay. So, at the same condition the uh, pressure uh, the vapor pressure exerted by it would be lower or at the same uh, total pressure let us say if the solution itself is at ambient pressure. At ambient pressure this was the boiling point of the pure solvent, then the boiling point of the solution will go to this value T b. Okay. So, this is basically what we understand by elevation of the boiling point and that happens simply because the x 1 uh, decreases. In fact, um, adding a solute can make the solution a non-ideal solution, but then for simplicity sake, let us say we are, we are adding a very small quantity of the solute and therefore, it still remains ideal solution. So, the Raoult's law is still valid. Okay. So, with that we can say that the uh, vapor pressure gets lowered at the uh, boiling point and therefore, at the given pressure the boiling point increases. Okay. So, we can actually evaluate the elevation of the boiling point T b minus T b naught using um, the principles of uh, multi component mixtures. I do not want to go into details of uh, that, but we can show that this uh, elevation by how much it will be increased can be evaluated using uh, uh, multi component systems uh, theory uh, as approximately equal to because this is uh, we are making the assumption that uh, uh, it is uh, ideal solution number one and number two we are also making another approximation that T b and T b naught in the absolute scale are not very far from each other. So, we will then write R T b naught squared into x solute divided by h f g bar. Okay. 
where R is the universal gas constant, TB0 is the uh, boiling point of the solvent at uh, the pressure P and X solute is the mole fraction of the uh, so solute that has been added to the solution that is the less volatile or non-volatile part and HFG bar is the uh, uh, molar uh, boiling point, mol molar heat of vaporization of this one. So, uh, HFG bar is in kilojoule per kilo mole is the uh, heat of vaporization, molar heat of vaporization if you want of pure solvent. at let us say this is pressure P1 at pressure P1. Okay. So, at any given pressure, uh, if I know the okay, so X solute and the boiling point from the original PT curve and HFG the, from the properties, I will be able to evaluate how much will be the change in boiling point. Similarly, uh, we can also uh, talk about uh, lowering of freezing point. So, these are uh, applications which are very useful because for example, if I want to use uh, water as the coolant in uh, automobile radiators, I would like its boiling point to be elevated and the freezing point to be lowered and that I do by adding ethylene glycol to the water. So, because of that the boiling point increases and the freezing point uh, lowers and this can also be written approximately as Tf minus Tf naught. So, Tf will be lower than Tf0. So, this will be a negative quantity. So, this is minus R Tf0 into X solute. How much you are adding glycol divided by H bar I F, where H bar I F is the molar uh, heat of freezing or melting. So, it is basically latent heat of uh, fusion that we are looking at here in instead of the latent heat of this latent heat of fusion okay, and this is the latent heat of vaporization. Okay. So, uh, using uh, this, this is basically valid for dilute solutions because we are applying the um, uh, what do you call the uh, Raoult's law where uh, the liquid behaves like an ideal solution and vapor behaves like an ideal gas mixture. So, this is valid for small X solute. Okay. It is not valid for very large uh, quantities of X solute. If okay, that has to be done then uh, we will need to uh, evaluate it without making these uh, approximations. So, here actually we are making approximations um, of the kind that you have uh, log of x i, uh, log of uh, x i is uh, log of 1 minus x solute. Okay. And uh, this log of 1 minus x solute will be uh, series, but uh, we will truncate this to approximately minus x solute. So, this is the thing that you will do basically uh, this means that you are actually uh, neglecting the, so, so you are assuming that x solute is much less than 1 and therefore, x solute square, x solute cube etcetera are negligible. So, this is the uh, expression uh, simplification that we do because of which you get an x solute here instead of the log of 1 minus x solute here. Okay. So, that is, so if um, the concentrations are larger then those approximations cannot be made, but we will need to use the log of uh, absolute. But this basically comes from the uh, definition of uh, fugacity and uh, uh, chemical potential. So, that is basically where it comes. The same thing for this as well. So, uh, the simplified form that I have given you this form and this form are valid for very small concentrations of the solute. Okay. So, that is the thing. Now, um, 
This again takes us to another interesting concept of uh, osmosis and uh, reverse osmosis, which is another thing which has a large application in uh, practice. So, I will just talk about that a little bit. So, what is osmosis? So, suppose I have a tank okay, in which I have a partition which is made of a membrane which is semi permeable membrane. Okay. On one side you have the pure solvent. and on the other side you have the solution. Okay. So, let us take for example, here you have let us say sea water and here you have let us say pure water. Okay. That is an example where sea water is a solution of uh, salts in water and pure water is the solvent or you can have sugar solution or you can have any solution anything that is uh, dissolved. So, this is the solution and this is the pure solute, pure solvent. Then um, we all know that the mole fraction of water here is lower than the mole fraction of water here okay? and um, by uh, basic definition of uh, chemical potential uh, d mu y is equal to r t d of log f i. Okay. So, um, and if I assume that um, this f i uh, can, can it is so it, the solution is dilute enough that I can apply uh, ideal gas uh, laws in this, this actually uh, becomes uh, uh, we can, uh, can integrate this from pure substance to this. So, then mu i minus mu i star which is the reference state will be equal to R t uh, of n to log of x i. So, this is something that we can uh, write. Okay. So, uh, in this case when apply, I apply this to the pure substance the x i is 1 because it is only the solvent and therefore, this goes to 0 mu i becomes equal to mu i star. So, this is the mu i star is the chemical potential of the uh, solvent right? at the same temperature and uh, the pressure conditions. Now, if I look at the solution, then this x i is less than 1 because there is a certain amount of uh, substance uh, solute that has been added. So, this x i is less than 1. So, um, if I write this for the uh, solution, it is this and for the pure, sub, pure so um, uh, for the solution at uh, the same temperature and the say okay, reference condition this mu i uh, and for the solvent. So, so, this is for the solution and for the solvent uh, mu i is equal to mu i star of the pure solvent. So, this is mu i of the solution at that temperature and pressure, this is at the reference temperature and pressure and this mu i naught is the uh, so, so, for the solvent for this. So, if I uh, subtract the two Okay, because for the solvent this becomes 0, it is this. So, if I subtract the 2, I will basically be able to get R t log of x i, where x i is the mole fraction of the solvent in the solution will be actually equal to um, mu i 0 star minus mu i star and this I can write it as integral from p to p naught of V bar d p. Okay. So, this is the same thing coming from the definition of uh, fugacity and since this is a uh, solution in liquid phase, let us say this V does not depend on the pressure. So, I can take it out of the integral. So, this becomes equal to V bar into P naught minus P. Okay. So, what we see is that um, since x i is uh, uh, less than 1, there is a negative quantity here. So, this P naught minus P is negative. Okay. So, suppose P naught is the 
pressure on top of uh, this solvent at the same level here you would have a p so p naught minus p is negative so because this is p naught and there will be a certain amount of head that is standing on top of it so this uh, pressure at this location will be higher so basically what this means is that the solvent will diffuse into this and uh, raise this up so this p naught uh, p minus p naught when uh, no more uh, diffusion actually happens here so when the potentials become equal is called the osmotic pressure okay so it is the condition when the mu i of the uh, solvent and the mu i of the solution are both equal so the mu i here and mu i here are the same so there is no more uh, transport that happens so when uh, this pressure is not applied then the chemical potential of the solvent here is higher than the chemical potential here because this x i is uh, less than 1 and therefore this is a negative quantity so you will have mu is equal to mu i star minus this so the chemical potential of the solvent in the solution is less than the chemical potential of the solvent here so the solvent will migrate to the location of lower potential because of the chemical potential difference right and if I apply a pressure here then uh, so that this chemical potential becomes equal to that then no more migration happens and it stops. Now if the pressure that is applied here is higher so that the chemical potential here can be increased because of uh, higher pressure then the solvent can be made to migrate from the solution to the pure solvent. This process is what we call as the reverse osmosis. So you apply a pressure which is higher than the osmotic pressure on the solution and have a semi permeable membrane semi permeable membrane is one which is only permeable to the solvent but not to the solute then the solute will just remain here and because of the increase in pressure the chemical potential of the solvent here increases and therefore it migrates backwards so there is more solvent that you get here so this can be a method that can be used to purify water okay uh, what is known is that for groundwater Uh, which has let us say 2000 parts per million of solute okay dissolved solids what, what we call it as TDS total dissolved solids is let us say about 2000 ppm that is 2000 parts per million of the solution so this is a small quantity 2000 divided by 1 million is 0.002 hmm? 0.002 2000 divided by 1 1 power of 6 2 divided by 1000 okay so 0 0.002 that will be the mole fraction of uh, the so solute so it's a very small mole fraction so we can apply the, uh, the ideal solution uh, methods so then the pressure that is required uh, to keep this equal so the osmotic pressure is of the order of 1.3 to 1.5 bar So, if uh, this is atmospheric pressure, P naught is atmospheric pressure, then the pressure that needs to be applied here in order to make the reverse migration start to happen should be slightly higher than 1.3 to 1.5 bar above atmospheric, which is 2.5 to 2.3 to 2.5 bar or more. Okay. And uh, if the same thing is about seawater, the concentration is between 35,000. To 45,000 ppm, which means that the osmotic pressure is of, of the order of 25 bar. So, if you want to do see desalination of seawater using the reverse osmosis process, then the pressure that needs to be applied here should be at least 25 bar or more. Usually, commercially, what is normally used is about 70 bar. Okay. So, you make this pressure in excess of uh, the osmotic pressure by certain, certain amount so that there is an adequate chemical potential gradient here for the solution to migrate and you get, get membranes through which you push through the solvent so that you get pure solvent on this side. So, you get purified water on this side from sea water. So, you take some amount of sea water, compress it to a high pressure through a membrane 
and uh, you get the pure water and then you throw away this water, take some more seawater and compress it and so on. So, the, in that process, you pu purify the seawater. Similarly, the RO system that you have at uh, your uh, residences applies the same thing. It has a membrane and it applies a pressure on the uh, brackish water so that it uh, the dissol dissolved solids are left behind here and the pure water goes here and this water is drained. That is why you keep draining water in an RO system continuously. So, the brackish water is uh, ex extra so salt solution water is drained out. So, the water that you drain has more dissolved solids in it as compared to the water that you originally got. Okay? So, that is the reason why there is a lot of water wastage particularly in uh, uh, RO systems which work on uh, highly brackish uh, uh, water supplies. Okay? So, the fraction of water wasted will depend on how much is the osmotic pressure you are applying, how much is the pressure that you are applying here for RO and uh, how much is the initial uh, concentration of the salt solution. So, basically this is what I uh, wanted to cover under uh, applications of uh, multi-component systems. We will uh, stop here this discussion. In the next one or two lectures, we will be talking about chemical equilibrium. When, so, we have been so far talking about um, multi-component mixtures in which no uh, reaction is happening and therefore, the moles are conserved as they are, but um, if there is a chemical reaction happening, then one substance would get converted into another. So, there will be atomic level conservation, but there will be no conservation of uh, moles of individual species. Right? So, in such a case, uh, there is a forward reaction that happens, the reactants combine to give products and the products recombine to give back reactants and uh, there is a reverse reaction that happens. So, uh, the reaction goes to equilibrium at a state where the forward reaction rate balances the reverse reaction rate. So, that is what is chemical equilibrium. So, what is the condition for the chemical equilibrium? Because normally every reaction ends when the state uh, of equilibrium is attained and not when complete conversion occurs. So, we will talk about the condition for chemical equilibrium and how to evaluate the composition of uh, equilibrium products under ideal gas conditions. That is something that we will look at in the next one or two lectures. We will stop here for this lecture.